I asked 25 people what was stopping them from starting a business. 24 of them said money. I find this really frustrating because believe it or not, you don't need any money to start a business. I'm going to tell you a story how I made 2 million US dollars starting with nothing. And I'm also going to reveal four easy ways you can start a profitable business with no money. Hey guys, don't forget to stick around to the end. I've got a bonus point for you. For those that already have a business, I'm going to share with you an insight I've just learned to take your business to the next level. The first thing I want to talk about is how to build a business with no money in the context of you don't need any external money. So 10 of my 19 companies I have started in my career have been started with no money. And one of the most successful businesses, Fluid, which I sold to PricewaterhouseCooper, was started with no money. And I think that sometimes having no money can in fact end up being a superpower. Why? Well, first of all, initially you've got nothing to lose. And a lot of people that have money have something to lose. But more importantly, how can you get a business off the ground with no money? The simple formula that has worked for me time and time again is let's take a service business as an example. You have an idea to offer a service to a client. I had an idea to make something called coaster ads happen, an advertising concept. And then you go with that idea to a partner, to a client, and you pitch it to them. To take an idea and pitch it to someone costs you nothing. Now, if that person you're pitching it to says they want that service or they want that idea, as it happened to me with this concept called coaster ads, then you can basically say, great, would you be willing to pay me a 50% deposit in advance? And that 50% cost that I would charge the client in advance was 100% of my cost. So in other words, if someone goes ahead and does something, like United Airlines went ahead and advertised on our coasters, I could charge them the 50% I needed to make the coasters, hire the team to distribute them, and all the different elements involved from the 50%. So in other words, if you want to start a business with no money, you can do it through cash flow. So point number two on the list of how to start a business with no money for me would be going out there and asking family and friends. I recently interviewed Tony Fidel. He invented the iPod and he created a company called Nest, which he sold to Google for 3.2 billion US. And what he said to me stuck with me. He started a business by his uncle giving him money. And the business he started, the original business he started, didn't work out. And he always felt guilty that he'd lost his uncle's money. And I felt terrible for like 15 years. And as we discussed it, the true point is not that his uncle gave him money and he felt guilty about losing it, but perhaps being very clear with your family and friends that if they give you money, they must look at it like they've written off that money, that they've lost it forever. And will they still love you? Will they still talk to you at the Sunday lunch dinner table? Will they still respect you and be kind to you even if you lose all the money they give you? I think have that in writing that they understand that. And that is the risk of a startup. Now, of course, if you give your family and friends equity and your business does really well, then they're gonna benefit from it. And of course, maybe they're supporting you because they love you. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. But just make sure you are clear with any family and friend member that they could lose all their money. Now, this particular formula is well known. Get an angel investor to invest in your business. So how do you get an angel investor to invest in your business? Now, I am an angel investor. I've invested in 76 startups. One of the key things I always tell people if you're looking to raise money from an angel investor is don't ask for money. That's the ironic twist. Initially, ask for help. If you ask for money, you'll get advice. If you ask for advice, you'll get money. Now, it's not a fixed rule. There will be occasions where, of course, investors are expecting you to want money from them. That's why you're talking to them. But sometimes you can ask them for help. And what's great about doing it that way is you can find out that angel investor has the knowledge to help you. Money in the early days of any business is actually bizarrely not that useful, as you might think. What is really useful is having someone that has knowledge, skills, and contacts to help you with your business. Get to know your angel investor, very important. Don't rush the process of getting married to someone, right? Get to understand their motivations, their moral code, what makes them tick. But of course, in the end, it's about relationships. I personally invest in businesses because it's going to be fun. So don't forget to inject a bit of fun into it to ensure that everyone enjoys the journey of the business they're about to invest in and you're about to build. The fourth and final way that I know to raise money that works is basically through a combination of crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding, or you can go into the VC space. 
of course, to get investment for a VC, it's very simple. Go research what the VC expects. There's a whole slew of sites out there like AngelList and others that will give you these contacts. Crunchbase, you can go see what companies have got investors from who. You can go see on these sites all the information you need to find out who are the investors. And they're pretty straightforward. You go to them with what they need and they will say yes or they will say no. What is more complicated, I think, is the crowdfunding market. And there are a few different models within the crowdfunding market. So there's equity crowdfunding, which in a way is competing with the traditional angel investment model and even the VC model. You can go to the market and say, this is what I'm going to do, or this is what I have done. And the market will then decide as a crowd whether to invest in you. And in return, you give them equity. So it's a very straightforward thing. There's quite a few platforms doing it. Cedars, Crowdcube, there's, there's a few. The other way is through product crowdfunding. So if you have a product or you want to launch a product, what you can do is go on sites like Indiegogo and you can say, this is the product I'm thinking of launching. Would you buy it if it was in the market? And then people say yes and they buy it. And that then gives you the money to go and make the product, distribute the product and all that marketing of the product gets done in advance basically. So here's the bonus folks. I just discovered a whole new concept of how to raise money without giving away any equity. I just interviewed the founder of Clearco. It's a new company that is basically giving you the chance to raise money based on your projected cash flow. If you have a business and it can show that its cash flow is growing, in other words, you spend 10 pounds or $10, you make 100. Or you spend $10, you make 50. Whatever the mechanism is, if you can prove that, then they can project out your eventual profits and there's loads of platforms now doing it. I just happened to have recently interviewed the founder of this one and, and got to understand it. She's an incredible founder on top of a billion dollar company helping people start businesses. And I want you to know about it. If you found this video useful, hit the subscribe button and you can watch our next video to help you unplug from the matrix.